everyone welcome back to my channel today i am filming a recent reads video for you all so i personally don't like doing monthly wrap-ups i think they take too long um especially when i read a lot of books per month which i typically read more than at least 10. i feel that with monthly wrap-ups i also can't talk about books with as much depth as i want to or i can uh, because sometimes i'll forget or i feel like i have to rush through rush through like talking about them I also feel that doing recent reads allows me to create more content which I'm still fairly new at booktube so like if you were to look at my channel now I only have like a handful of videos which I don't like seeing I wish I also don't like that my channel if you look at it right now since I am still new to YouTube that you can't see um, or you can only see a few videos because that's all I've done so far so today I have a handful of books some of these I listen to audio some of these I got from my library and some of these I read physically so starting with the first book I was sent this from the author's team so thank you so much to I believe it's Stories Untold Press. Uh, this is The Crowns of Crosswald by D.E. Knight. This is a middle grade series. Um, I think there's like three out so far in the series but I was only uh, given the first one which is fine. Uh, this series is about a young woman. She's about 16 years old and one day while she was exploring um, the castle I guess that she works in as some sort of like cook or something um, her magical powers are unleashed and she gets invited to go to this very like prestigious school so she can learn how to like hone in her abilities and know and learn magic in general right so in this world there's two types of people who have magical abilities and the first class is the royal class and they have these like stones put into their like crowns and that's how they access their magic and then there's another class of people I believe they're called Scriveners or something and they have like an innate magical ability like within themselves um, and both of them go to the same school uh, so we have a little bit of a school setting there's an evil witch like antagonist that is like threatening uh, our main character and that's kind of where like problems lie I thought this was a decent start to a middle grade series I will say that it's only been like maybe a week or so since I finished that book and I don't really remember much um, and I think that's because our author didn't really take the time to explain how the world worked. There's definitely some things, some elements in the story that is unique to the world that the author created but I don't think she went in depth with it. I think she really wanted to kind of just get to the like good parts or the action-y type parts and we didn't get to explore the world. This, this story kind of took place if I remember correctly through an entire school year and I felt like the school parts the parts where we get to explore the school setting were minimal I definitely think that's the worst part of this series is that or at least this first book was that there isn't enough exposition if you were to ask me how does the magic work how does the world work um, I'd be able to say something 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 I think because I, I I'm not 100% sure I do think the writing had really pretty like whimsy parts especially towards the beginning however the pacing was a little um, off as a reader I couldn't like digest the plot points or the reveals that were given to us so it just felt like it just felt like things were just constantly being thrown at us and by looking at reviews um, there's also a lot of comparisons to uh, Harry Potter which is happens all the time um, people always compare middle grade series to Harry Potter and there's definitely similar like themes and tropes but I think this author kind of made the story her own so overall I think this story was good but I'm not exactly rushing to pick up the next ones there's other middle grade stories that I want to continue on uh, but thank you again to the author and to the publisher for sending me this so the next book I read on ebook and I got from Kindle Unlimited and it's The Kiss Thief by LJ Shen so this is a dark romance about a young girl I believe she's 19 when the story starts her father is the like mob boss of like a Chicago outfit unit whatever you want to call it and she's lived a very like sheltered life but at the same time she also doesn't have a lot of freedom her father won't let her go to university and since she's her father's only daughter the man that she will eventually marry will be like the boss or the like the inheritor of this mob uh, because her father doesn't believe that her as a woman has the right or the ability to lead the mob so there's obviously like super sexist characters in the story and her father is the absolute worst. As much as our main character doesn't like this, she's accepted it and she actually has plans to marry this one boy that she grew up with. He's only a few years older than her. I want to say he's like 22 or 23 and to her 19. However, one day um, her father marries her off or kind of sends her off to the senator who is essentially her father's rival, which confuses her because why would her father... Want, let her marry or force her to marry the senator 
wants to at the same time bring down her father's entire work and career whatever you want to call it and that's where our romance starts so our characters genuinely really dislike borderline hate each other at the beginning of the story and i think it was really great I, so the author created a lot of tension at the beginning of the story i think she did really well creating this hate that the main characters had with each other the love interest for our main character is uh, a bit older so there is a little bit of an age gap he's i want to say in his mid 30s early mid 30s so there's a, a bit of a gap so that makes you uncomfortable if you don't like seeing that kind of trope um, this book might not be for you. There's also some like alcohol abuse, adultery. I'm not sure how to like put this in a trigger warning but our main character does lose her virginity and it's not, um, it's pretty jarring. So and it borderlines like abusive kind of so if that also makes you uncomfortable don't read this. This is a dark romance for a reason and it's also enemies to lovers for a reason. I also think the journey from hate to lovers was also well done. One of my pet peeves with this trope is when that hate turns to love like almost instantly because of like one small interaction. I prefer that kind of uh, build of tension as opposed to this kind of like quick 180. So there was another love interest that I like talked about earlier. Our main character has had her sights set on him for a while and she was hoping that her father would eventually give her away to him. It's pretty however it's pretty obvious that he was never gonna be like the like the final like end game romance so anytime he'd like come out uh i assume that he would just be there to create tension but there were so many times when our character was like no i can't be with him anymore i have to be with this new man that my father sent me off to and then she'd go back to him and then she'd accept again no i can't be with him um that part of my life is over and then she you know what i mean like it was always back and forth with our main character whether or not she could be with this guy that she grew up with and it was really annoying because it, it eventually became a waste of time for me. It seemed pointless to prop him up to be like another love interest that is like vying for the attentions of our main character because it never felt legitimate I guess. Something that the author also did was put a lot of like obstacles for our uh, main couple to go through. There's always something being thrown at them and at the end of the day the only like tension or problems that I was really interested in was the ones created by the couple within their relationship. I would have much rather read a story where it was like less of this like gang violence stuff subplot and more about them learning to trust each other or just like not hate each other as much. Just like the tension between the two main characters was enough for me as a reader to be like entertained. I didn't need all of this other like drive-by attempted murder like arson whatever drama. But other than those two things which are still kind of minor for me I still really enjoy the story and I'm really interested to read what else the author's written and looking for more like dark romances. Again there's some triggers that you should probably get familiar with age gap romance. Um, there's definitely some lines that are crossed in terms of like abuse, there's adultery, uh, alcohol abuse, mentions of like uh, abusing like narcotics and stuff. So the next book I listened to the majority on audio which I got from Kindle Unlimited as well and that is The King's Traitor by Jeff Wheeler. This is the third book in like the first arc of the King Fountain series. I've mentioned Jeff Wheeler in general on this channel a lot and that's because I think he's such an underrated fantastic fantasy author. He writes political intrigue really really well. He also writes like overarching plots really really well. I mentioned that this is the last book in this uh, three book arc but there are many other books within the series. I want to say they take place after this the main character in this story has grown up and has a child. I would say if you're interested in reading Jeff Wheeler I would start with these uh, the first three books in the King Found series. So this story revolves around a young boy named Owen. Owen's father was the duke of a certain territory within the kingdom and when the king was going through a revolt his father Owen's father didn't immediately uh, side with the king he was kind of like waiting to see like who would like probably be the victor and in return when the king eventually did win the revolt the king basically took Owen as a hostage in the meantime before um, his father would go through a trial to see whether he was guilty or not and if he should uh, die for his crimes for treason and that's basically the first book i can't really talk about like specifically what's going on here at this point in the story owen's much older he's in his 20s uh the first book starts off when he's like like nine or ten or something um but he's in his 20s now he's grown up under like the king's tutelage and he's basically the only father figure that owen's had 
as much as he feels duty bound to do what the king wants him to do he's starting to see that the king has become the monster that his country thinks he is at this point in the story owen's really conflicted on doing the right thing or fulfilling what's expected of him. There's also an element of magic in this world that is tied to the kingdom's like religion. In this world there's this king fountain which blesses a small amount of people with like magical abilities. These people with magical abilities also on some level can have a communication with this. It's like basically like a force within the universe. This story also has a lot of King Arthur influences. As someone who's never read King Arthur or any like excerpts of the, the legend, it was pretty obvious. So if you are interested in that, this, maybe this can count as like a retelling or at least influenced by. There's also some like Richard III um, influences. A lot of this story was also influenced by the War of the Roses period in England. And while I'm not done with like the King Fountain series, there's definitely another arc. Um, there's also some prequel novels. I would definitely give this arc like 5 out of 5 stars. I think Jeff Wheeler's such a great author and I wish like more people read him. He also has like a backlog of books and series. Most of them actually take place within this kind of same realm. Please let me know if you're a Jeff Wheeler fan as well because I don't see a lot of people talking about him which makes me really sad. So the next book I read as an ebook and I got from my library and that's Pride by E.B. Zaboy. This is a modern Pride and Prejudice retelling specifically talking about gentrification and class. Our main character is black, Dominican, and Haitian, and she's lived in the same um, neighborhood her entire life. She's lived in the same building her entire life. Uh, a family moves across the street from her home, and it's pretty obvious that this is a wealthy family. And pretty quickly, our main character starts feeling a change within like the community. Our main character almost immediately feels negatively towards this new family that's moving in. She doesn't like change in general, and this whole book is about not just change within the community, but change within herself. Our main character is a senior in high school and she's also getting used to the fact that she's also going to be leaving her home. As excited as she is to go to the college that she's always wanted to go to, she's also really nervous about it. She's also really nervous about leaving home and I think there's a lot of relatability here. A lot of the things that she's feeling leaving home and going off to a college that's not like immediately like down the street or anything. I felt the same way going to a college that was like nine hours away from my hometown and that was really uncomfortable and really nerve-wracking but I enjoyed reading that here because I think it's really real and authentic. Evie Zaboy also has a really good voice for teen and YA characters. It didn't feel like this is an older person writing a young younger voice. It felt real. I think the best parts of the story weren't necessarily the romance. Um, the relationship that she had with her sisters is great and the relationship just in general with the community was really great to read. This was also a really quick read so if you're looking for a book to binge that's also written by a black author, you know, in light of the Black Lives Matter protest going on, I do wish that the romance between our main characters was fleshed out. It almost felt a little instant and I, I personally didn't get like a good moment or pivoting moment where characters stopped disliking each other. I wish that was done a little bit better and I wouldn't have mind if this book was like 50 to 100 pages longer because it was fairly short but I think this was like a great lighthearted contemporary read which I don't usually read contemporary. I was in the mood for a light contemporary read so I'm happy I picked this up. I also wanted to pick up a book by a black author. Definitely the best part of this book was the family dynamics. It was kind of reminiscent of like how Jenny Han handled the family dynamics with her to all the boys I love series. That was a family of sisters and this is also a family of like, a lot of sisters and I thought it was really great and sweet and I would 100% recommend. So the next book is definitely my favorite that I'm going to talk about within this video and that is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I also think this is probably the most important book in this recent reads video. Our main character Justice is a young black boy going to a fairly affluent white like prep boarding school. So at the beginning of the story Justice is very sure of himself. He's very proud of where he is now. He's happy that he's not in his old neighborhood. Everything's going really well for him. He's like on the debate team. He has really good grades. He has a bright future ahead of him. However one night while he's helping out a friend he is detained by a police officer on the grounds of he's suspicious. That moment kind of triggered something in Justice where he isn't as sure of himself and he's starting to see the world in a new way. Being detained by the police officer was really enlightening for him because he's now starting to see the world for what it really is. Um, no matter how hard that he works to be a good black person, 
there are still so many people in the world that will always just see his skin color and he's starting to accept the fact that a lot of his classmates that he's um, gone to school with for many years have very very racist behaviors and he's very uncomfortable with that in order to cope with his like realizations he starts a journal where he writes to the reverend martin luther king jr and just as tries to use martin luther king's teachings in order to address the racism he has at least in his own life but he realizes that patience and kindness and pacifism only gets you so far especially to people who won't acknowledge the systemic racism in many facets of our society. I think this story does a really good job of framing, especially right now, the Black Lives Matter movement of police brutality for a younger audience. I think it also does a great job of like, not just being a surface level discussion on racism. It's not just racism is bad because we're all equal. It's more like racism is bad and here's how certain people perpetuate it. It even touches on like microaggressions and like the small snide comments like she's really pretty for a black girl things like that is also discussed so you get discussions on pretty broad topics uh, like police brutality systemic racism in you know housing real estate or like the school system but you also get discussions on like how to talk to your friend about comments that they're making or behaviors that they have and i think this is great because it opens up the discussion on racism since so many people in this country assume that racism is wearing a kkk outfit and like saying the n-word it's so much more than that that's just very surface level very obvious racism just from this book alone i think nick stone's gonna be an autobi author someone that i'm very interested in following and the last book i'm going to talk about is the only book i've read physically at least recently and that is the 12 kings in sharikai by bradley p budio this is an epic desert fantasy series that takes place in this uh, desert kingdom that is ruled by these 12 immortal kings who've gotten their powers from the gods that this empire worships the kings have been in power so long i want to say 300 400 years that they themselves are worshipped or respected or feared like gods themselves. Our main character Cheda spent half her time running um, valuables in like this underground black market uh, community and the other time like a pit fighter fighting like really tough seasoned veterans. However through a series of events Cheda has the ability or the opportunity to kill one or more of these kings and in some parts this is also a revenge story so if you're looking for something like that Cheda is kind of assassin like um, I wouldn't give her that title per se, but she definitely has a lot of those qualities. Obviously this book is really dense, it's kind of thick. My biggest critique is that some parts kind of drag a little bit. I really like reading Cheda's point of view. I think she's a fantastic, I think she's a fantastic lead character. However, there's another character that got some screen time. Um, one of her love interests, or the main love interest that she has, um, got a lot of screen time and we see the and we have some of his point of view chapters as well and I thought those were kind of boring. I didn't really care for his character at all. Jada really really loves this person and the main reason why is that they grew up together. She knows him very well but as the reader I never understood why. In fact he spends a large part of this book kind of avoiding Jada for some reasons and I wasn't interested in him at all. There's also another character that was really minor for the most part and I think he's going to get more screen time in later books and I wish we got to read from him more so than um, the love interest that Cheda has. I wish the author was a little more forthcoming about how the world works. Just tell me straight what you're talking about because I don't have the time to kind of like figure out exposition. I wish that we got like more time with each of these kings, at least gotten like one POV chapter from each of them or something because we don't have like a character list like at the beginning of the book before the story starts um so i had to make my own list of who were the 12 kings and what are they like the kings of like what are their respective like abilities this is a very slow paced story and we don't get like a lot of traditional action until maybe the, the last 50 or so pages in a very thick book there is some tension towards the beginning so if you're not into that maybe this isn't for you um, you might get bored. I was entertained for the most part. Other than that one character I wasn't interested in, I did enjoy this. But still is very interesting so I don't get to read a lot of desert fantasies. But yeah this is very cool and different from what I've been reading recently which is either like urban fantasy or like political intrigue medieval ish fantasies. So that's all I've read recently. Thank you so much for watching. I will link all my socials down below and I will see you in the next video sometime soon maybe. Peace out.